Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about launch control, two-step, anti-lag, what all of these terms mean, what they are, what they aren't. As you can see, we have cars shooting flames, making pops and bangs. I got the volume down. There's one on our dyno. Uh, Proco Evo. First seven-second Evo in the U.S. Anyway, we're going to look at some examples um, of Evos, uh, the Supra, the Skyline. Figure out how to set up good launch control that will work. Because in the end, it, we're going to use it for drag racing. A lot of people probably use it to go to Cars and Coffee. But we're, we're going to use it for what it's for, taking off from a stop, taking off from a dig. So let's get into the tech. So this is a data log of the launch control setup from the Black Supra that we've been tuning over the course of the last month or so. The car we used for not control. Stock bottom end 3 liter with a 6870 and GSC S1 cams. As you can see, it comes on kind of slow. That's the white line here as I'm revving up. We're going to see what the max boost was. First thing to notice down here, fuel cut, spark cut. I have fuel cut before spark cut. And while it alternates between the two, the main reason I do that is to keep it from flooding out. Now we can make big pops and bangs if we do it the other way, or if we stack those numbers closer. But for the most part, I keep fuel cut always before spark cut. In the case of a 2JZ specifically, it's to keep it from shooting shims out on the rev limiter. Uh, this would apply to an SR20 with rocker arms. Uh, depending on the RPM range, Mitsubishi's, a uh, few cars, FA20s, you don't want to get aggressive on cars that are going to have valve train problems. Now, when you saw the video in the intro, and I'm going to overlay it right here, here it, it rev up. It's very, very smooth. There aren't that many pops. All of what is happening is timing based for the most part and very, very small fuel cuts to keep everything happy. Now, if you look, we have the ignition trim right here. We have spark timing right below it. And we have RPM and the targets. Now, if you look, you can see that I'm floored. It's zero inches, it's 100 kPa. And as I move through, it really starts to do something. The trim starts to take over. Now we're negative 13 degrees. We're getting close to the RPM range. So this is where it's starting to build up slowly and smooth. There are many ways to do it. I chose to do it as smooth as possible on the 2J just to keep everything happy. And then as we get up here, this looks like it took a long time. But it really didn't take that long. Maybe, what, two, three seconds. Uh, get a maximum of negative 25, basically. Um, the ignition map had 8 degrees in it at that point. Minus 33 got us to 25. Basic math. Built 18 pounds of boost, though. It didn't sound rowdy, but it made boost. So we don't always have to get out of control in order to build uh, inertia in the turbo. So that as we come out on the clutch, this might be quote-unquote fake boost because there's no real torque behind it since the timing is so low. But if you come out on the clutch right, or if it's an automatic, the turbo already has all that speed. So as soon as the timing comes back, the torque comes back, and we can take advantage of it. This is why... A good foot on the clutch or a clutch slipper, depending on how the race car is set up, the converter working correctly, it's all very, very important because otherwise you could come out and bog. So that's one way to get really smooth uh, boost capability out of your, your launch control. Now, we're going to spend most of the time in the Infinity and uh, a few of the cars. Uh, we don't necessarily switch to the GTR in this part of the video. We're going to do that in part two. 
because it was on a Haltech. But Haltech does the strategy a little bit different. Their cuts are faster. Uh, in my opinion, I think the Haltech launch control works better. But again, we'll get to that in the next episode. Right now, we're just going to talk about uh, Infinity-based launch control. The theory, though, uh, does apply. It's all it's all basically the same. One thing to keep in mind is that as you're trying to build your target boost, if you don't want it to go crazy high, you do need to taper that timing retard back off. So like here, 250 kPa, 21 pounds. I don't really want it going past that. So as we would get to 275 kPa or 25 and a half, 26, that timing retard goes away and it just really can't do anything. One way to help keep the, the boost level in control. Main reason for doing this is we are building pressure on the back side of the exhaust valve. We can create valve float because of the combustion that is happening outside the combustion chamber. We can melt exhaust valves. This is something you don't want to sit on for very long. So with that in mind, let's switch to the next car, which also happened to be a 6870 equipped car, but it was a two liter Evo. Let's see how that one worked. So this is an Evo 9. And in this graph, again, it looks like it took forever to get up to the target. But we're going to switch to AM data uh, briefly after this to show that the, the time that it took to go from right here to right here isn't as long as you'd expect. One thing that you can see, though, is we're coming up. It was already on the two-step right here. We see the oscillation. We're 6,100, we're 6,200, it pulls it back down, 5,960. So we're, we're getting some of that two-step effect where it's not necessarily doing anything. It's not building boost because we look, we only got 4.6 PSI. You could leave on that, possibly. I think with the 6,870, it's definitely going to stall. You're going to have to step it up. So as it continues to build, we see that we get up to 225 kPa, 18 and a half pounds, basically. This map set up very, very similar because all, all of these are going to work basically the same. Maybe the base timing number here is different, but where we end up, we're going to be somewhere between negative 20 and negative 25 degrees usually in order to, to get the boost built. Now, on a smaller motor, we have to spin it higher just because its boost threshold is going to be higher. And since this is a 2-liter, not a 3-liter, we're 6,100 instead of 5,100. But, again, everything's set up the same. 6,100 on the fuel cut, then spark cut. So, let's switch to AM data. We're going to look at how long that took from flooring it to actually get to full boost. So we floor it, we got good timing, it's 12 degrees. It starts building timing. Now basically, it got to 6200. We started here at 1.1. It got to 6200 at, at 1.8 seconds more or less. So, a eh, little slow, not the end of the world, three quarters of a second. Now from this point to this point, where it made the 225 kPa, it's 2.85. So it took little over a second by the time it got to 6200. Just a little over a second to get to the boost. So if you were to drag strip, that is something you would definitely have to keep in mind as you're staging. Maybe this car needs nitrous. Maybe it needs the RPM set up a little bit higher. But you are going to have a little bit of time in some some cars, some combos, to get that turbo moving. So I could have been a little bit less aggressive on the timing pull, possibly. Maybe switch to the spark cut instead. Um, the problem is that can create a situation where the car loads up, it goes rich because it's still spraying fuel, but you definitely get some pops and bangs. Now when you do that, the problem is you can create a situation on your exhaust valves a lot faster. So you need to keep in mind how long it takes to get to that point. 
So for the Infinity, we're going to switch to our last example, which happens to be a 2.8 liter stroker RB. And we're going to go to that one right now. So as I've talked about before, RBs typically are not fast spooling engines. Usually they're the RB26. This happens to be slightly larger. It had a TO4Z 67 mil on it. We didn't do the build. I can't really remember what cams it had in it. I believe they were either HKS or Tomei, but I'm pretty sure they were HKS. Um, and I didn't really set this two-step up specifically for racing. It is a little bit more oriented towards the cars and coffee crowd just to be able to make the, the noises. So you're going to see something kind of interesting. Uh, this one was a little more optimized as we come in. It has a little bit more all-motor timing. It's 21 degrees right there at 4200. Uh, we're starting to get everything to move. And then all of a sudden, as it's snapping up, it really starts to pick up some engine speed. And then we get into the ignition trim launch table here. So you can see the timing is just starting to drop. Maybe just a little bit early because it is 4900. As you can see, spark cut, this one has spark cut first, 5200. But the transition time from here, as it's starting to make these cuts, which we can see these, these big drops here, where it's really starting to do something. Engine speed levels out, stays pretty level right around 5200. I'm only really pulling 11 degrees right there, 11 and a half degrees. It's not... A ton but I was only trying to make 10 pounds of boost main reason don't want to hurt the exhaust valves but we wanted to make some loud noises uh, much like the the green r33 at the the outset of the video we wanted we wanted to make sure that people knew we were there shoot some flames and then it's all over relatively short pull maximum of 10 pounds and when we switch to am data for this particular car you can kind of see where I'm starting to floor it, right here, right around the 1.1 seconds. Right about 1.45 is where the timing starts to drop out. And from that point to where it really has made all of the boost, 2.45, one second to make 10 pounds of boost, launch the car and go. So last example for the Infinity. That being said, we're gonna move to the R33 and Haltech in part two, which will be coming out in a couple days. If this is content that you like, please let me know. Easy way to do that is hit the like button, leave comments. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. If you have friends that like tech info such as this, how to tune the car, how to set things up, race info as we get it, please consider sharing it with them. If you want notified as new content is added, simply click the bell icon and YouTube will notify you. Thanks, guys. Take care.